starting now. Commonalities, where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. Politics, religion, finances, all the topics your grandmother told you not to discuss with friends. And now, your host, Matthew Dowling, and today's guests on Commonalities. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We are actually doing today's show uh, while we pre-record uh, for the convenience of many of our guests. Today's show is live, and I am uh, doing it from the WMBS studios off of Morgantown Street in Uniontown, and producing is Bill Madden here with us today. Um, and we have a wonderful guest with us, a uh, Pittsburgh media icon, John Steigerwald. John, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, Matthew? Oh, doing well. I think uh, most people uh, in the uh, in the Fayette County Uniontown area know your credentials. Know that uh, you know. I remember as a as a child that uh, you were doing sports casting with uh, with some of the greats like Myron Cope. Um, oh, yeah. And you've been uh, you've been doing uh, some conservative talk radio since that point in time. But the reason we wanted to have you on today was so that we could have a little bit of discussion about the media's role in politics and how you've seen uh, that kind of change in uh, in your career span uh, over the last couple decades. Well, I mean, how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, actually, um, you know, it's, it's two it's two different from a national perspective. It's obvious. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty old, so I was out there selling cable TV door to door when I got out of college in uh, 1972, 50 years ago, believe it or not. Um, <clears throat> and I had to tell people when I knocked on the door, I, I, what part of the sales pitch was I would point outside to the, to the wire running on the telephone pole outside. I'd say, you see that silver wire? That's a cable. And we're going to connect the cable from, to that that's going to run directly to your TV and you're going to get great reception and blah, blah, blah. And I had people say to me, I will never pay for to watch TV. I'm never going to pay. Just imagine somebody saying that now. And they said, um, some people would say, that's the way, that's a way for the government to spy on you. That's never going to be in my house. I actually made really good money doing it because, because I was, I, I was a, a recent graduate from college and I, you know, I was getting, I, I had feelers out to get a, a real job and I was making the equivalent of about probably, I don't know, $1,500 a week working at like 18 hours a week selling it. So, but I was good at it because I knew what it was and I knew what the future was, but I, you know, I was, I was charging five, I was asking for $5. That's how much it costs for a month. And look where we are now where, not and back then all you got really was some um good reception on the local channels you know perfect reception on you know the everything the cable gives you and the and the big uh the attraction that i was selling was that you could watch wor tv in new york and watch mets games um so right now you have 150 channels at least that you can watch and then they're streaming so just the, the, the way, how much the technology has changed since, since I got out of college and the way, forget about what people see on TV, the way they watch TV has changed so much. Um, and then in the last 25, 26 years since um, Fox has been on, the, obviously the, the, the main cable news networks, MSNBC, CNN, and Fox, are competing, uh, but Fox jumped in there smart enough to see the, the void that was there for conservative news, and they, they're killing everybody. So the biggest change in the last 25 years has been Fox, because, uh, because if you just try to imagine, you know, the, all the discussion that you're seeing now about the Hunter Biden laptop, there would be millions and millions of people still today that would not know what you're talking about. If you said uh, Hunter Biden's laptop, what do you think of that? And you ask them, they say, who's Hunter Biden? What's that? If you, that's what would be going on if there was no Fox TV, because the other networks, including not just the two cable networks, but um, 
ABC, CBS, NBC, they've basically until very recently, they ignored the story. So if you don't have Fox there, that's just one example of, you know, the same, you could say the same thing about the border. The border is now, the other networks are finally paying attention to the border after Fox has been beating on it for a couple of years. Um, so the fact that Fox has created a, a spot for conservative news and commentary, uh, that's the biggest change, aside from the technical change that I just described from going from, you know, I watched you watching uh, three stations to watching 150 stations. And on the local level, um, when I started working at Channel 4, we had a half hour news at six o'clock. We had a half hour news at 11 o'clock. That was it. Now they have a 4 o'clock, a 5 o'clock, a 6 o'clock. They're on three or four hours in the morning, all three stations. And most of it's garbage, but it's it's different. And so that's the biggest change. Quantity has been is, is great, much, much greater. The quality, much, much less. Yeah, I you know I've been surprised seeing the advances of uh, what quality is acceptable um, in news production. You know, I, years ago we would have never thought uh, of you know a reporter getting on their uh, Facebook Live on their cell phone right in front of them no. and, and doing a preview of that story. Now you know that's expected in the field, and and I'm even seeing people. Uh, in the media world who, who, you know, their stations have requirements on them for a number of social media posts and interactions. Um, oh, yeah. Because, you know, yeah. they, they really want them to to be a persona. But, you know, the other change that uh, that I think you started to get to with, with Fox is the 24-hour news cycle. And I think back here oh, in Pennsylvania absolutely. to, uh, I believe it, and I could be wrong, uh, so catch me if I am, but 2005-ish was the legislative pay raise that happened in the middle of the night. You know, you think back to 2005, how much different, uh, even just then, uh, politics and the way it was covered was uh, that you were able to, to push a pay raise through in the middle of the night because no one was watching. Yeah, uh, you, uh, there's the things, and again, though, <clears throat> To me, the the big uh, it's obvious that you can't get away with certain things, politicians or and and other people, and and nobody can get away with anything anymore. You can't you can't beat somebody up in a subway station without it being recorded by somebody and out on the video seen by millions of people. So <clears throat> you really can't get away with anything. But but um, the the difference is that these the stations have the ability to do this kind of stuff. But they, the, to me, the biggest sin that's being committed, not just by national, but even maybe more so by local, is it's a, omission, not willing to cover a story. There, there are great stories out there. Uh, pushing through a pay raise in the middle of the night is one example. Um, I don't know that any of the three local stations, news operations, would really make a big deal about that today. I just don't think they would. Uh, they, um, there's, there are so many stories that I see that I, <clears throat> excuse me, that I um, <clears throat> cover on my radio show that I discuss on my radio show, and I look and I, 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 I the, the local stations aren't covering it. They just don't cover it. If it's not a murder, or a fire, or a car accident, or the weather, it's not in the newscast. Anything that requires um, enterprise. Uh, requires a little bit of guts, maybe, to do the story. Um, it's almost non-existent, and it's embarrassing. And I know, I know the people. I, I don't blame the people that you see on the local stations, and especially the ones who have been around for a while. If you if you agree with what I'm saying, don't blame them because they know as, as well as I do that it stinks, and that it's the it's the way it's being run by ownership. And management, and they're afraid to do controversial stories because somebody might get upset. And um, it has to be a certain kind of a story for them to have the guts to do it. But they they'll stay away from anything that um, would would get anybody upset. And even in sports, 
<clears throat> I don't know how long, how far you go back. <clears throat> Excuse me, a lot. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned Myron Coke. Myron Coke did a commentary every night at six o'clock. Um, I, when I was doing sports, at, I, I moved over to KDKA. The news director came to me and she said, I want you to start doing commentaries at 11 o'clock. I said, okay. Um, and Sam Nover was over on Channel 11. He was doing commentaries, not every night, but often. You tell me the last time you saw anybody do a commentary on a local sportscast. doesn't happen. And it's not because they're not capable of doing it, or not, not even because the people you're watching aren't good at it. It's because management doesn't want it. It's, it's, it's evolved from being afraid that you might offend somebody to you might say something that someone disagrees with, and that's how that's how insane it's become. And just just and, and, and <clears throat> again, I don't know how far you go back, Matt, but um, Al Julius, when I was working at KDKA, there's a guy named Al Julius. He was a Shakespearean actor, but you know a really smart guy. He did at least a two and a half minute commentary <clears throat> every night at six o'clock. <clears throat> and it was just him, his face speaking into the camera. No B-roll, no no other video to talk about, no sound bites, just his well-written, Shakespeareanly delivered commentary. Try to imagine somebody getting away with doing that on local news today. Wouldn't happen. Can't yeah. do it. Yep. They don't you they don't you don't you can't do anything that takes longer than a minute and a half. Yeah, every, think, e everything has to be in that concise uh, sound bite. And he, oh, yeah. You know, that, well, here's what happened. I, I give, let people in on a little secret. I can't tell you exactly what year it was, but it was in the late 90s probably, uh, maybe even closer to the mid-90s, uh, which is a, you know, a long time ago to some people, but when you get up to be in your 70s, it's not that long ago. Um, <clears throat> back then, um, they they – uh, the meters showed up. These are meters that are connected to your TV, and that's how they measure or record what you're watching. They used to do it. The Nielsen uh, ratings used to be they would give people a diary to fill out, and you took their word for it that, that, that they wrote down what they were watching. Well, then they came up with these meters, and it's probably, it's probably more sophisticated now than I remember it's probably not even a, a wire. It's probably Bluetooth. You know, it's probably re it's wireless. But anyway, it, 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 there's, there's like, I think there's like uh, 600 TVs they would hook it up to in the, in the market. And that's how they would get their ratings. <clears throat> but they were able to measure the ratings in uh, every 15 minutes. So they when they produced a newscast, they were mostly concerned with ratings. So they... It wasn't about a story that you wanted to do, and if it required three minutes, three and a half minutes, uh, or a two-minute report followed by a minute and a half interview, that would be okay. But now it's all, and I'm not that familiar with exactly how it works, but it's structured in a way that in order to get the credit on the meter, a certain story has to run at a certain time, and if the meters record every quarter hour. So... There, when a story hits, what time weather hits in the newscast, what time sports comes on, all that is determined by how it's going to affect the meters. So, they're think so there's no thinking involved anymore. It's, it's all about the meters, and it's all about the ratings. The only ratings they look at are, are, uh, that they care about are people 25 to 54. Because that's what the advertisers care about. Say, if you're if you're 60 years old or if you're 20 years old, they don't care if you watch. You're out of that yes. demographic and, and you're not who they're targeting. Hey, we have to get a quick yeah. break in here, John. Yeah. Uh, but I want to keep using the same example that we were before because you were talking about news stories that people may be afraid to cover. And I haven't heard as much coverage about this as I thought I would uh, back to – uh, the same example, legislative pay raises, and I don't mean to beat up my uh, my recent colleagues because I know they they do work hard, but we see uh, a huge increase. 
December 1st, those uh, state representatives and state senators got a raise of $7,400 a year. Um, this year, a huge increase, tops uh, six-figure salaries for legislators, and we're not hearing talk about that in the media. So when we get back from this commercial, I want to discuss why, uh, why we may not be and see what your thoughts are on that uh, automatic COLA increase that the legislators got, John. You're listening to Commonalities, where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. We'll be back after this brief break to recognize our sponsors. When it comes to buying a home, what you see isn't exactly what you get. That's why home buyers should call Dave Dowling at Grandview Inspections at 724 208 4108. You'll see colorful flowers, freshly painted walls, granite countertops, gleaming hardwood floors, and other touches. What you can't see is the cracks, ancient plumbing, dangerous wiring, or broken appliances that might be revealed when you hire a home inspector. And when it comes to home inspectors, knowing yours has the qualifications and experience needed should be your number one concern. Dave Dowling with Grandview Inspections is an architectural engineer with over 30 years of commercial construction experience and hundreds of inspections under his belt. A home inspection is an opportunity for you to hire an expert to walk through the home and prepare a report outlining the home's major components, what needs immediate attention, and what will require maintenance after you move in. Your home is one of your biggest investments, so make sure your investment is everything you hoped it to be. Call Dave Dowling at Grandview Inspections at 724-208-4108. Are you enjoying the program you're listening to? Support Commonalities and help keep us on the air by making a donation of $5, 10 or $25, or any amount you feel comfortable sharing online at donate.commonalities.online. Again, that is donate.commonalities.online on the World Wide Web. Buy our host a cup of coffee or help pay for airtime at donate.commonalities online. Founded in 1991, Bright Stripe has succeeded on the premises of quality work, done right at an affordable cost. At Bright Stripe, personal service has always been a must. We strive to be the premier asphalt sealing and striping company in the region. Matt George, the owner of Bright Stripe LLC, brings experience from his construction and maintenance company, Mountain Creek Construction and Maintenance. Matt has provided excellent customer service to many happy businesses and homeowners. Bright Stripe is the premier provider of seal coating, or pavement sealing, the process of applying a protective coating to asphalt-based pavements to provide a layer of protection from the elements, water, oils, and UV damage. They also specialize in driveway and parking lot crack sealing. Crack sealing is the process of applying a protective coating to asphalt-based pavements. Bright Stripe also abides by all safety laws and standards in line striping and layout. For a no-obligation estimate, contact Bright Stripe at 724-437-6090. Is your business using analog strategies in a digital marketing world? If so, then contact Matthew or Rebecca Dowling at Coordinated360 for a professional consultation where we bring in-depth knowledge and functional expertise with a holistic perspective. Coordinated360 provides digital marketing, paid ad and media buying services, web design, social media management, video production and more for businesses, organizations and political campaigns. With decades of experience, Matt and Becky at Coordinated360 can help you craft your unique message and share it with the world. For a no-risk media evaluation and recommendations, call 724-320-2212 or visit us online at www.coordinated360.com. Find us also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter or email info at coordinated360.com. You're listening to Commonalities, where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. Well, thanks for sticking with us here on WMBS 590 AM 101.1 FM. 
And uh, you can download this podcast every place you find your favorite podcasts uh, or visit us at www.commonalities.online. That's commonalities.online. I'm Matt Dowling, your host, uh, along with our guest, John Steiger, Wild Media legend uh, from the Pittsburgh area. And uh, we're talking today a little bit about uh, media and politics and that importance and how that's changed over the years. Uh, before we went to break, we mentioned that there was an automatic COLA increase for legislators that uh, equaled $7,400 uh, this year. And like I said, I don't mean to uh, to beat up my colleagues, but uh, this is something that I'm not hearing uh, out there in the media as much as I thought I would now that Pennsylvania legislators are, you know, topping six <coughs> figures. John, what are your thoughts? Well, when, when did that happen? Uh, that happened on <coughs> December 1st. I'm, I'm, I don't know how I missed it. Shame on me. Um, if, if I, I don't read the, I don't get the newspapers delivered to my house anymore. I, I, not that there are any that are even being delivered, but um, so I, I get most of my news online and I'm surprised I didn't see that. But, uh, I, and again, I don't watch local news. I, I can't last a minute and a half watching it because it's, it's so bad. And so maybe I, I should watch it, but I, I they don't pay me, put it this way, they don't pay me enough to watch local news every day. <laughs> so, um, but that that's a story that, you know, again, you're talking about the changes. There used The local stations used to have a Harrisburg reporter. They used to have a reporter who lived in Harrisburg and did reports on state government, if not every day, several days a week, <clears throat> and... Um, they don't do that anymore. I mean, they, they had a regular report from somebody in Harrisburg on the state, whatever state, whatever was happening in statewide politics. They don't do it anymore because no, no, they're they've dumbed down their audience, Matt, to the point where that's not a that story just isn't important enough to people, and they don't know how to do it to make it interesting. Um, <clears throat> well, if they if they if they wanted to do that story the right way, you would first of all you would choose to do the story, and you would confront the politicians who voted for it, and make them answer the question: Why do you think you deserve a raise, and why was this done in the middle of the night? And if you don't do if you don't think that's a story number one that you have an obligation to your viewers to do. Or number two, you don't think that's a good TV story because it's good TV, then you need to just just quit. You need to shut the whole operation down and go home. So how they don't how they don't see that as a good story, especially now with the way the economy's going, uh, and I and <clears throat> I should say that it's possible that they did the story. I didn't see it, but um, my guess would be if they did it, they didn't do it right. They didn't. They didn't. Um, they didn't dwell on the controversy enough, or they didn't. They didn't mine the story enough to get the important stuff out of it, and also to maybe, I don't know, cause a little bit of a debate, or combine it with someone from some statewide organization who could talk about why they should or should not have gotten the raise. That's the way you do the story. Maybe they all did it, and I didn't see it, but. That's not the kind of story they do anymore. And <clears throat> to be honest with you, that's that's a big story. That's an obvious one. I'll give you one. This is an example of from just a few days ago. I did the I did I opened my show uh, Monday, I think it was, by saying, "Don't vote for Rachel Heisler." That was the first thing out of my mouth. Uh, you probably don't know who Rachel Heisler is. She's running for controller for the city of Pittsburgh. Michael Lamb is the guy leaving the job. He, he said he's going to run for county executive in Allegheny County. And Rachel Heisler is his, uh, his deputy or the deputy controller. She wants the, the, the top job, so she's running for it. Now, it's Pittsburgh, so I'm guessing that she's running in a primary because there's not going to be any Republican going to get any votes. So... Um, she had an ad that I saw online 
that said, come for donuts and drag. And she's doing a fundraiser that will include a drag uh, queen performing. And it said on the ad that it's family friendly, a drag queen show. Now, if you have any idea of what good television is, and someone brings that to your attention, number one, you got you go find Rachel Heisler, and you say, what makes you think that a drag queen is a good thing to have with donuts and kids at a fundraiser? And number two, you make sure that you tell your staff, we will be at that event, and we will get video of this drag queen, and we're going to do a story on it. I would be willing to bet lots of money that there was not one word mentioned about that on any of the three stations. That is a great, first of all, it's a story that is a good story. Maybe you don't care about drag queens, but it, I don't know if you're paying any attention to what's going on in the national news. There's a lot of talk about that, a lot of discussion about it. And here it's happening right in Pittsburgh. And if, if you don't think that that's good television, then I, I don't know, and, and then, you, then you should stop wondering why the ratings stink, which they do, by the way. Well, and, and I think so that, that, that's just an example. I, and I, again, I don't watch the news. Maybe I missed it. They did it, but I'm, I've gotten to the point where I, I, I know well enough to not even bother to watch because it's not going to be on there. So I don't have to sit through a newscast. You know, they didn't do it. But I'll be happy to be corrected and criticized for unfairly criticizing them for not doing a story that they did, but I haven't had anybody do it yet. You know, in my time in the legislature, what I found mm -hmm. uh, was, number one, um, rather than getting requests for comment or, uh, you know, any kind of my take on, on a bill or legislation that was happening or, or anything relevant in Harrisburg, um, we were really out pitching the stories that we wanted told um, right. You know, there it was if we put out a press release and it was written the right way, um, a lot of times we could get whatever coverage we were looking yeah. for. Right. You know, well, and, that's a, the answer to that is that that shows the laziness and the lack of enterprise on the part of the stations, the local stations. It shouldn't take you sending out a press release. As a matter of fact, it should be done the exact opposite. They shouldn't be doing any stories based on a politician's press release because you're not going to send out a press release to cover a story that's going to be detrimental to your cause. <clears throat> so you're, you're asking as much for promotion of your cause as you are for coverage of it, which is understandable and what you should do. But from looking at it from their standpoint, <clears throat> they should be looking at it whether it's a good story or not. And they, and they should have, there should be some built. I don't care whether it's a Democrat or a Republican uh, legislator. If the press release comes out, the first thing that you should <clears throat> view it with is skepticism. You shouldn't. You shouldn't take it, take it at face value. If if you put out a press release saying you've just come up with this wonderful idea and it's a it's a law that's going to help everybody and everybody should get behind this. I, if I'm a if I'm a good journalist. I'm not buying that for one second until I look into it myself, and I'm and then I'm going to go find I'm going to go find if it's a Republican who put it out I'm going to go find a Democrat to get his or her um, take on it for you, two reasons that's the way it should be done journalistically and again it's good TV and and you know I I think my feet were held to the fire the most when I was on AM radio stations across the Commonwealth. Or, you know, from time to time when I was on the half-hour call-in show on PCN, yeah. um, you know, but but there aren't many people watching PCN, um, you know, to, to see watching. that kind of no. good journalism. But that was the one time when you were put on point and counterpoint and uh, and had to have the you answers. You could have done the show naked, Matt. Nobody would have known. <laughs> that, that is true. Hey, we have to get one more break in. Uh, okay. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about Facebook and uh, the age of Trump in the media. You're listening to Commonalities, where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. We'll be back after this brief break to recognize our sponsors. Founded in 1991, 
Right Stripe has succeeded on the premises of quality work, done right at an affordable cost. At Bright Stripe, personal service has always been a must. We strive to be the premier asphalt sealing and striping company in the region. Matt George, the owner of Bright Stripe LLC, brings experience from his construction and maintenance company, Mountain Creek Construction and Maintenance. Matt has provided excellent customer service to many happy businesses and homeowners. Bright Stripe is the premier provider of seal coating, or pavement sealing, the process of applying a protective coating to asphalt-based pavements to provide a layer of protection from the elements, water, oils, and UV damage. They also specialize in driveway and parking lot crack sealing. Crack sealing is the process of applying a protective coating to asphalt-based pavements. Bright Stripe also abides by all safety laws and standards in line striping and layout. For a no-obligation estimate, contact Bright Stripe at 724-4. 437-6090. Is your business using analog strategies in a digital marketing world? If so, then contact Matthew or Rebecca Dowling at Coordinated360 for a professional consultation, where we bring in-depth knowledge and functional expertise with a holistic perspective. Coordinated360 provides digital marketing, paid ad and media buying services, web design, social media management, video production, and more for businesses, organizations, and political campaigns. With decades of experience, Matt and Becky at Coordinated360 can help you craft your unique message and share it with the world. For a no-risk media evaluation and recommendations, call 724-320-2212 or visit us online at www.coordinated360.com. Find us also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or email info at coordinated360.com. When it comes to buying a home, what you see isn't exactly what you get. That's why home buyers should call Dave Dowling at Grandview Inspections at 724-208. 4108. You'll see colorful flowers, freshly painted walls, granite countertops, gleaming hardwood floors, and other touches. What you can't see is the cracks, ancient plumbing, dangerous wiring, or broken appliances that might be revealed when you hire a home inspector. And when it comes to home inspectors, knowing yours has the qualifications and experience needed should be your number one concern. Dave Dowling with Grandview Inspections is an architectural engineer with over 30 years of commercial construction experience and hundreds of inspections under his belt. A home inspection is an opportunity for you to hire an expert to walk through the home and prepare a report outlining the home's major components, what needs immediate attention, and what will require maintenance after you move in. Your home is one of your biggest investments, so make sure your investment is everything you hoped it to be. Call Dave Dowling at Grandview Inspections at 724-208-4108. Are you enjoying the program you're listening to? Support commonalities and help keep up us on the air by making a donation of five, ten, or twenty-five dollars, or any amount you feel comfortable sharing online at donate.commonalities.online. Again, that is donate.commonalities.online on the World Wide Web. Buy our host a cup of coffee, or help pay for airtime at donate.commonalities.online. You're listening to Commonalities where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. This is Commonalities on 590 WMBS uh, 101.1 FM and 590 AM. Also, uh, Commonalities is available any place you download your favorite podcasts. You can also find the video version on Facebook. Uh, search for Matthew Dowling Public on Facebook and, uh, and connect with us and the show. Tell us who you'd like to hear from in the future and what topics you'd like us to discuss. I'm with uh, John Steigerwald today, who many of you know uh, from his days as a sportscaster, uh, really a media icon or legend in the Pittsburgh area. Um, but John now does a, a show on AM 1250, The Answer, out of Pittsburgh, uh, and it is conservative talk radio. Uh, before the break, we started to 
to talk a little bit about how the media in politics and its role has changed. Uh, and I said I wanted to get to talking about uh, Facebook and what Facebook has done or changed, uh, in your opinion, as far as politics goes. And then also um, the age of Trump. We saw uh, some very big changes here in the last presidential election. And uh, in our last uh, eight minutes or so, I wanted to, to touch on that a little bit, John. Well, I'm not a big fan of Facebook, never was. Um, I actually have never really been on Facebook, except for a friend of mine who was involved in social media long before it was cool, and he used to post my column that I was writing um, up there for me, and, and that was it. But I, I never even, I never posted anything myself, and I'm not a big fan of it. And then with what's happened with Zuckerberg and what's been going on the last couple of years, um, I, I like it even less. But I do know that the, the people who work in local news are required, at least they were for a long time, I assume they still are, they were required to do things on Facebook, including live productions. <clears throat> and it's, a, you know, it's almost gotten to the point that if you aren't on Facebook, then you're not doing your job. And um, I, I, it obviously has had a, a major effect on the way people cover things, but it's also, I think, contributed to the laziness on the part of the, the news operations because you have a, an audience, kind of a captive audience to your, your Facebook um, friends, and you, you put stuff out there. And I don't know how much money they're making from Facebook right now with you know, selling ads. Uh, I'm sure it's nothing close to what they make still from selling TV time, but um, it's, it's had an effect. I'm not so sure it's a good one. And I, I think when you're, what you're finding out now, what's happening with Twitter, and they're finding out what was going on there and how it was being manipulated, that people are going to be less and less likely to trust what they see on any uh, media, uh, I guess a, a, a news media slash social media platform. Why would anybody trust anything you see on it ever again, based well, on what we've heard from, about Twitter just in the last month or so. In, in, so isn't there I don't still, think the future is good for them from that standpoint. It isn't there still, and, and you know, I'm, I'm thinking of the, the weathermen that I follow from the Pittsburgh media market, and I, I know some of those guys, um, uh -huh. and they're good people, but, I, you know, I look at some of the things that they, pay, they post on Facebook, and I know they are just to get likes and interactions. Um, yeah, no they're, question. they're silly. They're goofy in a, in a way, and, you know, I, ha I think back to you know, when I was a kid or a generation before that even, uh, there was some kind of uh, belief that there was honest work in journalism. And, well, you know, I, yeah. I know that we want to personalize these people. We want to humanize these people. That way you, you feel like they're your next door neighbor and, and you want to hear the news from them. I get that. But at some point in time, don't we make things a, a little too personal? Don't we open that door between well, the journalists you know, I think and the people? Yeah, I think it's different when you're when you're putting it on Facebook. It's kind of the thing that people expect, and I think they expect something different from there and uh, on there than what they see uh, on the on the news at night or in the morning. And so I think you can get away with it more. I I I, I think I, I don't know if I can. I, Joe DiNardo would have done it, but he would have done it his way. He took he took weather very seriously, so he wouldn't have been fooling around. He would have looked at it as a way to give people 24-hour weather service. <clears throat> so I, I don't see any of the things you're talking about now. I, I, I've seen them online being done by other people, and I know what you're talking about. But it's also that that's another example of what's wrong with local news, Matt. The uh, the, the you, I can get the I can get the weather in Istanbul on my phone in 15 seconds while we're on the air right now. I could, I could while we're speaking, if I wanted to, I could give you the weather forecast for Istanbul, and I'm not exaggerating. <clears throat> so yeah, my phone, whether I want it, whether I want it or not, my phone gives me the weather for Cupertino constantly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if you if you were doing a uh, if you watch a local newscast on any of the three stations, they do how many weather forecasts do you see in an hour? And they're talking about 
Well, it might be raining uh, a little later today. We, we, uh, right now it's clear, but when we come back, we'll tell you what it's going to be doing later tonight, as if somebody has to wait for them to come back and tell them what's going to happen tonight. Oh, you say it might rain? Let me look at my phone here. Oh, yeah, it says there's a 50% chance rain at 9 o'clock. I get it. They still do it like it's 1956 that, you, that you're, going to, you're depending on them for the weather. And, again, that's laziness. They got to fill time, Matt, and so the weather fill each each little weather hit fills two and a half to three minutes. That's what that's time they don't have to worry about filling with actual you know news or maybe commentary or something interesting. So that's you know when you brought up Facebook and these guys on the weather doing their stuff on Facebook. Um, that's just that's a that's a, the best example. Of why, and I I know those guys, and they do a great job. And they, there are times when it's really helpful when there's a snowstorm coming and your phone doesn't really give you the details, or there's a tornado in the area, or something like that. But and those guys, I know I won't give you any names, but I, I've been in situations where they've been pressured to go on the air and talk about thunderstorms, severe thunderstorms on the way, and they will say to the producer. Well, you know what? I, I, you know, I don't think they're going to be that severe. But, that, but they're told, well, yeah, we'll make them severe. Okay, we need people to watch. And that's it, the kind of stuff that goes on. You know, in in, in defense of some of these uh, journalists, especially some of these uh, young television journalists that are out there, I know one who's currently on uh, WTAE, and he hates to be thrown out into the every bureau chief goes out and does the weather from, you know, Delmont and Pittsburgh yeah. and and wherever yep. else. Because he's not able to cover a real story that he would enjoy doing, and uh, you know, and well, I've, that does, I've had those if conversations. You're, if you're, yeah, if you're interested in doing really hard-hitting stories, local news is the wrong place for you to be working. And let me tell you something. I told you about the meters, okay? If if a certain area has a, a certain a, a good number of meters during a certain ratings period, February or May. November, February, and May are the ratings periods. They know where the meters are. So if you your stories in your neighborhood become a lot more important to the news stations if a lot of people in your neighborhood for that month happen to get meters because that's how they get the ratings. It really stinks. And, and here's the thing. Um, when I was working at uh, Channel 4, Four million years ago, almost 40 years ago. I left there in 1985. That's a long time ago. But in those days, and, lo- and long after that, but specifically then, I, I remember we, don't, our, we were competing hard with KDKA. We were, we were one and two. And in the ratings periods, we would fluctuate back and forth. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, I can't be 100% accurate on these numbers, but I, I'm going to say that the number that we would get, which would be a share of the audience, one one ratings period, we'd get a 22, and KDK would get a 21. Maybe the next ratings period, it would be switched. And Channel 11 would get a 12 or a 15. So you add all that up, and it adds up to about 60, okay? If you added up what the stations get now in the 25 to 54 um, demographic at 6 o'clock, it wouldn't add up to 10. That's how, that's how, that's how it's changed. And, and keep doing the same things over and over again. The ratings still stink. Nobody tries anything different. And this isn't just Pittsburgh. It's everywhere. And if, and if you would get three televisions and put them in your living room and tune them to 2, 4, and 11 uh, and turn it on at 6 o'clock, if you watch the newscast, the same thing would be happening on all three stations at all the time. The weather would be on at the same time. Sports would be on at the same time. They would, they would be covering basically the same stories, and they do it every day. And believe me, there are people working at the stations who were around, the old-timers who were around when they actually made some effort at covering news, and there are very few of them left now. They know. They just come in, and I'm, I don't want you to take what I'm saying and blame any of it on anybody who you see on television because they're not making those decisions. No, you know it all. It all comes down to ratings, and uh, and we've seen that uh, over the years become more and more important. Um, well, John, I thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Uh, I've sure. en- enjoyed talking about uh, the way the media's role has has changed, 
uh, and how we can stay ever vigilant to make sure um, you know that that the media does things like fight political corruption and and do what they need right. to do. Hey, my guest today has been John Steigerwald. Thank you so much for being with us from AM twelve fifty, The Answer in Pittsburgh. You're listening to Commonalities on five ninety WMBS. This has been Commonalities, a show where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. Copyright 2022, Coordinated 360. All public rebroadcasts should be done with prior written approval from Matthew Dowling. All requests should be sent to info at coordinated360.com. Thank you for listening to Commonalities.